goes in a little bit, but God, God's patience goes beyond my understanding. It's like, God, if I was you, I would just barbecue the world and be done with it. God's not that way, is He? Oh, thank God He's not, or else I would smell like barbecue. <laughs> God bless you, and I'm going to let Brother Copeland come, uh, and tomorrow night's last night. So I know that God has got something special. And listen, church, what God, this has been coming for a year. And I know the enemy has fought. He's done everything he can to, to bring discouragement. He's done everything he can to stop it. But we are going to prevail in Christ. Amen. Not in our own strength or ability but in the strength of Jesus Christ, the one that we can do all things through. Amen. You can make it. You can make it. Praise God. Brother Copeland. God bless you, Pastor. I tell you, I've been enjoying this. Appreciate the noise singing and people have been praying. You can tell it. But this has been for me too. You tell that preacher that jumped on that plane and flew out of here to get a, get away from us, your cousin that uh, I've received too. I I got it uh, deep inside, enlarging my vision, and I'm not going to settle for less. Just ain't going to do it. We've settled too often, too many times for less, and the devil loves it when we settle for less. But God's always got more. If I'm going to get to more, I've got to quit settling for less. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I want to talk about your favorite subject tonight. You. Your... Well, I'm talking naturally just for a moment. We, we love it when we're included and we're talked about and well, come on. We're, we're promoted or chosen or whatever. So, now, now not every time it is our favorite subject is somebody's putting us down, you know. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about when things are going all right and they speak highly of you. We, we like to be included and all that. But I, I want to bring it down to another level because I, I want to preach tonight on knowing who you are. Not your brother, not your sister, not your pastor, but knowing who you are. Well, Brother Copeland, I know who I am. I'm saved, covered by the blood. I ain't what I used to be and who I used to be. Well, I know all that. I know my name. I know you know your name. <laughs> but I'm talking about in God. You, you see, before we go sin, I know who I am in God. There's a few scriptures that might just get down to where we live and it might just make us really think twice, do I really know who I am? That's what I want to talk about tonight is really knowing who you are. Yeah. We're supposed to know who God is and we're supposed to know a whole lot of things, but sometimes the way we act, the way we live, 
be lies of very confidence in really knowing who I am. If I'm really of a chosen royal priesthood, if I really got royal blood flowing in my veins, if I'm really the head and not the tail, if I'm really a king's kid, if I'm really walking dominion, power, and authority, and if I, according to all the different promises of God, if I really believe that, why in the world do I not act like it? Why in the world do I get depressed from time to time? When, why do I get bent out of shape? Why do I get discouraged? Why do I let things bother me? Why do I let everything around about me get me to a place that I just can't figure stuff out and I get confused and messed up and bent out of shape? I'm going to tell you not church, when we really begin to know who we are in God, we'll walk different, we'll act different, yeah, we'll on. begin to be different all areas of our life. Nobody will have to try to figure out who do we think we are because we are we are not our own. We've been bought with a price. Oh, hallelujah. And I just believe that the hour we're living in, God wants you and I to really know who that we are. And the devil will stand up and take notice when I know who I am. Then he got to take a back seat. Too many times, if I don't know who I am, I give over to him. If I don't really know who I am, I'll let him have his way. If I don't really know who I am, I'll do things that ain't quite right. Blame it on the devil. Ain't nobody but me that done it. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Psalms chapter 8. I'm going to read out of, out of the book of Psalms chapter 8. <clears throat> but I will get down in just a minute to the nitty gritty of this here. Or really, knowing who we are. The devil don't care when we just uh, pretend like who we think we are. He don't care if I talk big and act like I know something when I really don't. He's not worried about me coming to church. It don't bother him for us to come to church as long as we're not doing nothing against his kingdom. As long as we're not affecting the kingdom of God against the kingdom of darkness, he don't care. We can shout, we can preach, we can sing, we can do all these things, but until we begin to affect his progress begin to put him down brother Tim until we begin to put him in his place where he belongs then then only then when he begin to get really offended at us and get mad I don't care if the devil gets mad the matter he gets the gladder I get <laughs> Hallelujah. if we allow, if we allow the devil to make us get mad something's wrong <laughs> Woo, that's a, that's another subject for another day hallelujah but when I really know who I am We'll know that that he's a healer, he's a deliverer, he's a way maker. I'm chosen by him to begin to sing that song tonight. Hallelujah. Must have known what I was going to preach. God told you because that God knows who you are. Yes, he does. But one thing about it, the devil needs to know who I am. When he begins to stand up and take notice of who I am, he'll begin to attack harder. He'll fight harder. We, sometimes we don't like that, do we? We'll just keep going his way. He won't bother you. But uh, if you know you're going the right way, you begin to do things that God wants you to do, and the devil gets mad, he'll fight you harder. That lets me know I'm on the right track if I'm going uh, with God and against the devil. Psalms chapter 8. Verse number 1 says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory, there it is again, <laughs> preach about the glory, above the heavens. Now verse number 2. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Father, tonight we thank you, Lord, that you're in this place. You sanctified this hour. You've set it apart to withdraw closer to you, realizing we are somebody in you, realizing that greater are you that's in us than he that's in the world. What knowing without a doubt, God, that we walking in victory, walking in the power, authority, and anointing which you've ordained for us tonight, God. Let us all leave this place with a higher realization that we are somebody and can be somebody in the kingdom of God. We come from a nobody to be somebody. We're king's kids. Hallelujah. We got the royal blood going in our veins, and God, for that, we're grateful. We thank you for it. Jesus, the hearts and lives tonight. Let us have a realization that there's more to this life than a humdrum affair and walking around in the mully of Jesus. We are intended to be a creature of you, God, walking with peace and joy in the fullness of who you are. Help us not to realize our full potential in you, God. 
In your name I pray, Jesus. Hallelujah. But if we went no further, and I have more scriptures, if we went no further than verse number two that I read to you, we should never have any problem with anything else in the Bible or what we're doing in our life. Because if, if we believe the Word of God, I said if we believe it, let me just back that up for just a minute. Because if we really believe the entire Word of God, believe every scripture, believe all the promises, we'll avoid a lot of pitfalls and storms and trials and troubles we find ourselves walking into. If we really believe everything God has to say about us, we'll avoid a whole lot of trouble. We'll certainly miss the places where we're depressed and been out of shape. We'll certainly have the peace and joy of God follow us all the days of our life. Uh, we'll have the blessings of God trying to overtake us because we're following Him. If we really knew who we were, maybe sometimes we wouldn't have to have so many revivals, prayer meetings, fasting and praying. I preach in a lot of churches y'all have too. That's the next time you went back to the next year. Over half the church is backslidden trying to get the altar to repent again. Year after year after year. Yeah. If they really knew who they were. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't talking nobody tonight, am I? Yeah. But if I am, walk out of here tonight with a realization you are somebody. Yeah. You're the head and not the tail. Yeah. It's time that you could let the devil walk roughshod over you and put your tail on because God thinks more highly of you than you do yourself. Yes. But if I went no further, brother, in that verse number two, God made a promise. I, if I don't have no more promises, He said, out of the mouth of babies and suckers, thou hast ordained strength that thou mightest steal the enemy. What's that telling me? I don't have to go through another nine-step program. I don't have to be elevated for years in a position. I don't have to uh, try to pass every man's test they put out before me. I don't have to have the approval of religion. And I don't have to have somebody grade me, let me know when I've arrived in a position that I could be somebody in the authority of God. Because what he told me is the moment he ain't talking about that newborn baby who was just born a little while ago in the hospital up here or wherever. Or in the farmhouse like my brother was. Or somewhere like... He, he's not talking about those natural babies. He's talking about a child of God. At the very moment, Brother Chris, that you became a born-again child of God. At that very moment... Had I been born again in the kingdom of God? At that moment, He authorized all of heaven. He yeah. gave us all the arsenal at our disposal to stop and steal the enemy. As a newborn baby, as a new sucker that don't know nothing yet, had learned everything yet, don't know what I'm supposed to do, how to act or not to do. But that very moment, God said, I thought so much of you that I'm going to give you everything I got in my possession have the opinion of authority over all the power of the enemy. I'll give you what you need to stop and steal that enemy. I ain't got to fight that devil from here on out. We're walking in victory. God's already won that for him. Hallelujah. So I wonder sometimes uh, what's wrong with you and I. It's been going to play for a while. Uh, been traveling up and down uh, in and out. Uh, next thing you know we're discouraged. Just been out of shape. Ready to throw in the towel. Ready to give it up. What's our problem? Been serving God a year, two years, five, ten, twenty, thirty, four, fifty years. And still walking despondency. And agony and woe is me. I ain't talking to nobody, am I? Got saved last week. Why are you already starting to get discouraged? The very moment that I bowed on my knees 
and I cried holy. <laughs> Lord God Almighty, He wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. At that very instant, I didn't need no approval of mankind. I didn't need nobody tell me how to do or what to do. I, I'm not. I'm not talking about not having advice and going good. I'm talking about at that very moment when I'm still ignorant. When I'm still unlearned, when I still have some things hanging on to me, when I still have some bondages that haven't been broken off yet, when I haven't learned how to walk yet, how to talk and how to act, but at that very moment, God, not for nothing, me so highly, oh, at that moment, God said, I'm giving you everything that you need to defeat that booger man. <laughs> So why in the world are we worried about the devil? Why in the world do we get scared sometimes in the fighting and what I can't see and feel? Why do I get bit out of shape and things haven't got here yet but I'm looking to see it coming my way? Why is it that I look in the past and see something that I think may be coming tomorrow when I can realize the Word of God tells me I've got everything at my disposal. All I need to do is to grab a hold of it. All I need to do is to lay it in my heart. All I got to do is walk in it. All I got to do is just to believe the Word of God and walk in me yeah. to life. He's the one that's authorized all of it. He's the one that's got it. Why don't I receive it and use it? Knowing who you are, you don't have to answer this question, do you? Do you know who you are? The way, way we walk, way we talk, way we act tells whether I, I really know who I am or not. We can talk about it, we can sing about it, preach about it, but until I walk in the knowledge, I know who I am. It won't mean a thing, and the devil don't care. Hallelujah. But he said, out, out of the mouth of babies, I'm going to give you what you need. You'll still stop that enemy in the adventure. Went on verse number three. It says, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, Verse 4, he asked a question. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? And he answers his own question, verse number 5 and verse number 6. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. I don't find no category, none whatsoever, Brother Dave. It is a category where he didn't let me have up under my feet. I don't find nothing nowhere that he's allowed to have power and dominion over me. I don't find nothing. When I stop back and look at it, when I contemplate it, and he said, look at the stars and the heavens that I created that I formed, that I made. I made all of that. I made the angels. I made all creation, the creatures and everything else. And he said, I made me a man just a little bit lower than the angels. There's another rendition of it. It, it just it classifies it a little bit different. That he's made us and, and, and angels. It ain't like it's something a whole lot different between the angels and man in, his, in God's eyes. But anyway, for the sake of what he said here, that don't matter to me none whatsoever. It don't matter because what it means and what it says is uh, God made everything. He made the, the precious angels up there. It's, and even the ones that rebelled against him a long time ago. But in spite of all that, God said, you consider everything. <coughs> Just take a look at it, of it all. He said, I'm so mindful of you. I put everything I've made under your feet, under your power, under your authority, oh, under on, your dominion. He said, there's one thing. I may have angels separating between me and you. They cry, holy, holy, holy. And it, are they at your disposal. They, they are to help you. They're your shield. They, they this and they that, all that. Oh, we, we know angels but see, God said, in spite of all that, I created everything, all the great things, but he said everything else, 
I have put you in a place of having dominion and authority over all that. I said, oh God, really what is man that thou would consider me such as that? Who am I? God, I know we like to think about ourselves, but sometimes we don't think ourselves highly as we ought to. Sometimes we think ourselves more highly than we ought to. We feel left out, discouraged, bent out of shape, and all kind of stuff. But sometimes, 90, I guess probably 99% of the time, I don't think of myself as how God thinks of me. Because I got to look at my failures. I got to look at my faults. I got to look when I messed up. I got to look at this and look at that. But when I realize what Michael began to say over there, he said, when I fall, rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. Because when I do fall, I shall arise. And when I see the darkness for a little bit, the Lord will be a light down the back there. I say, take that devil. If I stumble a little bit, if I fall and falter just a little bit, don't you take the time to rejoice in me. Don't even take time to clap your hands at me, because I'm getting back up. I'm just about to get back up and shout from the mountaintops, shout from the roof, because I am somebody. God said it. That's enough for me. I believe you. He yeah. thinks highly of me. Go higher than I knew myself. And he put you under my feet. The angels are somewhere. But here, thank God, made. He placed me in authority and dominion over it. Come on, amen. And tragedy, circumstances, and the government, <laughs> the society, things that we don't think is within our grasp or our control messes with my mind everything about me and I forget who I am and I begin to look at all that conform to that I don't really know who I am because the way I act the way that I walk, the way that I talk forgetting what he said that I had and could have I'm the only one that will walk away from it I am the only one that will refuse the help of Almighty God with everything the angels have at my disposal that heaven has to offer and try on my own to figure it out, to work it out, try to promote myself for somebody else, try to get myself in a, in a place, a position where i got to figure it out. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm twiddling my thumbs, <laughs> grinding my teeth. I'm laying awake at night. And I'm going to tell you something, church. When God needs somebody that really knows who they are, you won't be brought down anymore to the devil's level and beneath the devil. He'll stay where he belongs on your feet. Up behind you, get you behind me, Satan. I'm going on, I'm trusting God because he's still the healer. He's still the deliverer. He's still the way maker. I don't care what it looks like right now. I still will call those things just not Brother Wayne has it just as though they were. God has gave us something that we could have and hang on to. Take it to the bank if he will. Because God's bank account has never run dry. Has never run out. When he can find somebody that begin to know who you are, people take notice. You'll have something inside of you. Start the revival within you. Round about you. They can't refute that because they're seeing it, looking at it. Consider all this glory stuff you've made, and you put it all under my feet. I show oh God, who am I? What is man? We don't have to. We don't have to understand really his mentality, of what he thinks about us. All we got to do is just believe it and walk in it. So what if I failed last year or failed last week? Our intentions had better be going forward, trying more and more, doing more. Yeah. You see, hell is full of good intentions. Yeah. Right now, hell is full of good intentions. Yeah. Everybody intended to get right. Yeah. I don't care if they ate us or what. Everybody intended to do good and that everybody wanted to go, but making arrangements and doing it is another thing. So hell is full of good intentions. But somebody knowing who they are. I ain't gonna go to that place. We've made a right of us to miss that place. I'm allergic to heat and pain. Glory to God. I can't know that down here in Florida. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. The writer keeps on talking to us about who we are. See, we know that he's, he told us that he's made us kings and priests. We don't act like it sometimes. We act like we're the scum of the earth and from the box, been straight from the bottom of the barrel or whatever. But God's got, he, he's got our best intentions at heart. He has looked at us and he told the writer over in Proverbs 16 and 7, he said, when a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. There's places where God has destroyed the enemy and other places over in Thessalonians where he just messed them up because they messed with you. <laughs> but in that, in this Proverbs 16 7, you ought to write that down and put it on your feet to every door. God ain't destroying the enemy. I ain't got rid of them. But he said, when your ways, that's not by stinking carnal filth the way of doing things, but it's striving, trying to walk up right. <laughs> Failing today, but picking up going on tomorrow. Not giving in, not turning around, not giving up. When my ways, that's walking righteous, a man, man's heart after God. When my ways please him, he said, I'll make your enemies to be at peace with you. Those that's been fighting with you, struggling with you, striving with you, just do it God's way. Because he said, I'll get in between. I'll get in the situation. I'll make them be at peace with you. You can still see them smile and wave at them. But they can't touch you because God has got a place and he come in between you. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, I love the word of God. That takes a lot of stress off me, a lot of worry. Let them do what they want to. Let them say what they want, what they, whatever they want to say. Because i got a God if I just keep pleasing him. He's, he's taking my position. He's on my behalf. He's my defense. I can't find no better defense they are in all of the world. I'd rather have him on my side yeah. than all the armies of the world at my disposal. Oh, hallelujah. He's the one that'll do it. I'm going to look at a couple of things. I, I just read to you what Proverbs had to say. But let me read you what Isaiah had reason for me in scriptures. But I just got to reiterate it because it's got to get down our spirit because we are somebody. Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that arise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the service of the Lord. Their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So I, I don't care what they say, how they holler, how they scream. What it is they're saying, what they're gonna do to me, what they ain't gonna do. And my Bible tells me there's not a tongue out there that has formed a weapon, well, weapon that can stop what God wants to do to you and I. All we gotta do is believe what God has for you, begin to walk in it, do it anyway. God, 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 God accomplishes what He wants to in you. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. There's no doubt of that. Let me say that again. If it's God's will, then it's God's bill. I don't care what the naysayers say. I don't care how the agnostics have put him down. I don't care how all the backslidden ones is coming against you. I don't care if they tell you how they done it like you did and how they messed up. Look at them. I ain't looking at none of that. Let them tongues just wag on. I'm going to close my ears because I'm here from God. It says they can't form nothing against me. It won't prosper. But he gave us the right to put it down and to stop him. I'm ready to stand up and say, oh, just say what you want to. But stick it out long enough and I'll just stomp on your tongue. You ain't going to have one to put back in your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. But we, we, we love the scriptures. What, what's repeated over in Mark and Luke. Mark 16, verse 17 18. And oh, we see, we, we just like to shout over these. But the, the thing of it is, can, can we walk in it? Can we do it? Can we be a doer of the word of God? These signs shall follow them that believe. See, if I'm running after signs, I'm walking in sin already. It says the signs will follow you, confirming the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak when you talk. They shall take up serpents. Up. <laughs> Got any snake handlers in the house? I was up in West Virginia one time. And I just had this eerie feeling. I done walked into a snake handling church. First time there. I'm looking around, and, and the message I was preaching, it had something to do with snakes and stuff, but I conveniently, you ever preach it, conveniently lead out a verse? I conveniently left out a verse about snakes. That pastor crawled me out of the church. He said, boy, when you bring my pulpit, don't you leave nothing out. I knew right then. He called it. He wanted snakes to come out. <laughs> 
The Bible says, they shall take up serpents. Brother Kid had Sister Hall, Brother A. Richard Hall's wife up in Cleveland, Ohio. She said this one here, and it always stuck with me. She said, I agree with the Word of God. The Bible says they shall. So they shall all they want to. I don't have to. <laughs> they can take it up all they want to. I'll take them up at the end of a hole, a shovel, or the end of a gun. Because I read the rest of the Word of God. It tells me, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I tell you what, the devil try to trip everything and everybody up with all kinds of stuff. But we get the whole Word and just dissect the whole Word of God. We'll have it living on the inside. We'll be doing this stupid, crazy stuff that's out there. Boy, they can do what they want to. But let, let them believe God. I believe the Word of God. He gave us the dark and dominion. But he also said, You can't, you, you better not be tempted to me. I'm not going to jump out, out that car running down the road 90 miles. And there is a bunch of, I ain't gonna jump out a perfectly perfectly good airplane without a parachute and, and why would I jump out a perfectly good airplane even with a parachute? I ain't gonna tell <laughs> the Lord my God. Woo, hallelujah. And if they drink any deadly things, it says if yes. some of them will drink strict night and crazy, they go ahead and drink it all you want to. <laughs> now they shall Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And most of the time, we don't see people laying hands on the sick because we will say faith, but we're afraid. What if something don't happen? And they'll be talking about me, looking down at me, and say, uh, "But what if it does? What if it does? What if God's ready to give you them new, new lungs? He may, he may even have them right now. For all I know. What if they didn't pray for you?" Me and God healed it. Healed her out of that knee. She's running all over the place now. But the Bible said, talking about you, I'm talking about you. They, you, shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now see, I believe in the miracles. I like the miracles when it happens. I love it. But also, this recovery is a process. He commanded every one of you that believes the word of God to lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. It don't matter if it's a miracle or it's a process. If God does it, I'm just glad to receive it any kind of way He wants to give it. If it takes a long time, that's all right too. Little by little, that's better to get worse and worse and worse, ain't it? It's a recovery. Don't forget it, church. It's a process. Oh, I don't know who you are. We'll begin to do things. And then the Luke said, Along the same lines, behold, I give unto you power to tread on the serpents. Out of the air it is. Whoa, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop that old, old, old snake down. That's just a good one. I like, I like the black snake stuff. And those, you know, get your insects. I'm talking about poisonous ones. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Over now, this over all the power of the enemy. Sometimes we got excuses why we don't come to church. We can't do this. Can't do that. Just didn't feel like it, didn't have the ability, just didn't have the want to. You see, where in the world do we think we can have power over that devil? It's been practicing thousands and thousands of years, and I don't even have the power to wipe my nose and come on to the house of God. I don't know who I am. Let everything separate me from the love of God and doing God's will. I mean, I, I, I don't know who I am. I, 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 yeah, I got all the power of the enemy, yes, sir. But look at my poor pitiful self. What's wrong with me? See, I, I'm not a believer. I'm saved, but I don't believe it, see? Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, Jesus said this, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. <laughs> Woo! I said, Hallelujah! Yeah. God, all that stuff don't matter. I am who you said I am. You call me by name. And there's one thing about it. What you do out here is not my concern. I love what I see. But the thing of it is, I don't want the big head. I don't want my name up in a claim and lift it up. I just want to know my name is written in a book of life. Is your name written in a book of life tonight? Do you know that it's in a book of life until it's written? There, you'll never have the potential to walk in the capability that God said you could walk on planet Earth. Uh, 
going to take a look at this word, though, in just a minute. It means three things, knowing who you are. Hosea had told us in the word, the prophet Hosea is speaking. God talked to him and he said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Just one thing, the devil knows the word. He can't operate in it to walk it. We can read it, have it, and hear it, but the knowledge. He said, he said, but my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see that we, we sit place after place after place. People, so-called Christians, call themselves Christians, been destroyed. Everything come against them, they're destroyed. Well, they don't have no knowledge. They don't know who they are. It don't matter if I have a lot of knowledge about a whole bunch of other stuff. Until I have the knowledge of who I am, I'm fair game for the devil to take me down and take me out. <laughs> Everything I try and I mess up a little bit, if I don't have the knowledge of knowing who I am, I, I'm just a set up for the devil to trip me up and, and to cause me to falter and to stumble and to fall. But until we know who we are, <laughs> the knowledge of anything else won't matter. We're destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Jesus told the church, he said, you're messing up, boys. In Matthew, he said, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. It's one thing to know about the power of God, what he's done for somebody else, what we read about, what we've heard about. It's one thing to see the power somewhere else. But he said, you're messing up, church. That's what he told them. He said, you don't know the scriptures, nor the power of God. We begin to get the word that in our hearts, we'll realize that we are somebody. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. We'll realize that everything it, the promise of God applies to me. And I have a knowledge of that. Then I begin to, I, I can only know the power of God if I'm walking in that power working in my life. If that power not working in my life, I don't know the power of God. I know about it, but I don't know it. There's a difference to know and really, really know. Don't get into that just, just a second. <laughs> Let me just go ahead. This word, this word, no, K-N-O-W, means three different things. Part, it gets a little rough, but part, part A. Got a few things with each one of them. Part A of this word no is having the full evidence. It's a matter supporting an argument, or and it makes evident is perceived or understood without effort, and it's obvious. And it's just but it's become aware of having the full evidence. You see, in a, in a court of law, you win your cases by having the full evidence. You got the evidence. You you sway the judge and the jury. You got the evidence to, to show and prove what you're saying, what you're trying to prove. And that's that that's that's knowing who you are. You got the full evidence. And it's becomes obvious. Everybody's aware of it. It's evident. You got it right there. You see, just because I got this laid at home by my side or on the table does not mean I got the full evidence. A matter of supporting an argument, just because I got it. Just because maybe I could quote it from cover to cover, don't mean a hill of beans. If I don't have it written in my heart, I don't have a matter supporting evidence of that I've got it. I don't know who I am because I know about it. It's there. I can read it. I can preach it. I can hear it, quote it. But until I got it in my heart, <laughs> it ain't worth a hill of beans. It don't persuade that devil. He ain't moved by none, none of that. Because I told you, he, he knows what's in that thing too. He knows what's in the Word too. But until I get it down in my heart, until I know who I am, begin to walk it out, then the knowledge becomes evident. People become aware because I ain't just talking about it, but I'm walking it out. You see, with this world out here, begin to see a church that's got the fire of God, got the anointing of God, when they begin to see the evidence of the power of God working, when they begin to see the evidence supporting who you claim to serve, woo, then they'll begin to recognize and see you got something that's showing them and telling them that it's for real. And you mean what you say. Part B, be fully informed. Your possession of essential facts, your 
in control, completely occupied. It takes possessions. It's ample, it's sufficient, it's enough. It's so essential that it's indispensable. Being fully informed again, don't mean I've read it and I'm informed about it. Being informed means I've got it on the inside, working on the outside. Have I got possession of essential fact on inside of me. What God says I am, then I am. What He's made me to be, that's where I know that I am. I walk in it. There's no doubt about it. I ain't giving up. I ain't complaining tomorrow about it. I ain't having doubt about it. I ain't walking in fear. I ain't up and down. Believe it one day and not believe it the next. Every day I walk in it. It's indispensable. I can't do without it. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. And it's enough. I don't need somebody else's opinion. I don't need what they think. I don't need their approval. I just need God's approval. I mean, it on the inside of me. Walking it out. I can't do without it. And it's sufficient. It's enough. Yeah. I don't have to have everything the world wants to shove in my throat. I don't have to have myself in a position. And I got to satisfy everybody. I got to conform to their ideals. I got to conform to their way of thinking. I might offend them. Let me tell you, I don't want to offend God. Part C. That gets a little rough. But I go on. They said I could go on. <laughs> Part C. It's inherent. What does that mean, Brother Copeland? I'm glad you asked. It's all knowing who you are. Inherit means this. I don't know if I want to look at y'all or not. It means lawyer and obedient. Oh, there's a whole lot to it. But first of all, when I know who I am, I'm loyal and I'm obedient. Of course, first of all, I'm loyal to God and His Word, obedient to His Word and obedient. I'm loyal to where He's placed me. I'm, a, I'm obedient to the Word of God without compromise. I'm loyal to the household of faith where He's placed me. I, I, I just it just goes without saying the pastor gonna have to call me up and wonder where I am because I'm obedient and I'm loyal I'm there if I'm one of them just when I feel like it when I think it, it fits my schedule I don't know who I am I don't know how many of you I'm talking to it's more than one but it's all right God's always given us a chance to go higher and go deeper, begin to know who I am. But a couple of you know who you are. Let me tell you something. I'm trying to get to know who I am. I'm working on it tomorrow, lady. I'm preaching to myself, brother babe. I'm, I'm pressing that way. But I want to get there. A little bit at a time, but I'm, I want to get there. I'm trying to know who I am, all right? Yeah. Just because I, I preach something to y'all don't mean that I got it on. I wish that was the case. I ain't never seen nobody that had it all other than the one I heard about Jesus himself. Glory to God. Lawyer and obedient. And when I'm lawyer and obedient, it does something else. It denotes being faithful. I think the devil's faithful. Has he ever quit bothering you in your whole life? He's consistent. He's faithful. He won't quit and he won't give up. He don't get tired. That either says a whole lot for us or a whole lot against us. You be the judge, all right? I'm having a good time. The devil don't like this. Why? He don't want to know who you are. Because until, when you don't know who you are, he don't yeah. care. He could care less. It's those that really know who they are. It's a danger to him. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones he'll bring up new devils and new levels for you. But when I'm faithful, of course I'm faithful to God. And again, where he placed me and what I'm doing, Nobody has to question whether I'm faithful or not. I've seen some faithful folks around here this week. I mean, they've been faithful coming and working behind the scenes and doing things and doing this and doing that. I'll tell you what, God's watching. He, he, he likes that faithfulness, let me tell you. 
man may not ever uh, see it every time, but God does. Yeah, that's because you begin to walk and know, knowing who you are. When that, that being loyal and obedient and enough being faithful does something, it, is, it inspires confidence. That, and that's the, uh, your ability and rightness because God is working in you, but it does something else. It brings about self-assurance. Now, wait just a minute. Wait a minute. Let's don't get on pride. Well, let, me, let me just get on it. I, I can't leave it out. Pride's always there. Try to bring us down. Inspires confidence and self-assurance. You see, so many people say, I don't have the confidence to do what God's called me to do. But somebody else is more suited for it. They ought to be the ones to do it. I don't have the confidence. I don't have the self-assurance. My self-esteem is so low. That's, that's another part of it. It brings about self-esteem. See, that's what we're missing in church. It's confidence and self-esteem. Because we want to we wanna put ourselves in a place that, uh, that I'll be looked at as having pride because I is in pride and, and, and that I can do it. But see, being so humble that we think we are is worse than having pride. Because if we got some pride, at least we're going to try it whether we think we can do it or not. If we got some pride and we're proud of something, we'll try things anyway. Look at me, I can do it. But somebody that says, I'm too humble to do what God's called me to do. I'm too humble to feel that position. I'm too humble to step out. God's looking at that. He's trying to tell us that's worse than pride. Because the guy with pride will at least try. He'll do something. God can change that. He can do something with that. It's the one that won't do nothing that he has a hard time with. Yeah. And that's what we're missing in a church. is self-esteem and self-confidence. Because it's right in the Word. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't have to know how. I don't have to know the way. I don't have to have it figured out. All I have to do is believe the Word of God yeah. and have the confidence and a self-esteem. I may not know how. I may not can, but I can through God that gave me the courage and gave me the strength and called me. I can do it because He said so. I don't have to be the one. I'm too humble to do it. It's I, I know I can't, but God, you can. I'm a winning vessel, sanctified and meek for the Master's use in the house of God. Those are the ones He can use. That's why I'm so many practical religious folks across the country can't do nothing and won't do nothing because they're all wrapped up in themselves and they look at the drug addict, the prostitute, the whoremonger that comes in and God delivers them and God begins to use them. It's because they're willing, knowing that they can do something because it's God through them done it. Get to know who I am. I'll walk away in the attitude of what I used to be and think. I realize I can't do nothing without God. My self assurance, my self esteem of being built up in Him because He's the one that I do it. It brings about self control. <laughs> I think we touched on that the other day. Self control is one of the hard things. It's, Easy to try to control somebody else until you have to do it ourselves. That self-control is the ability to restrain impulses or expressions of emotions with self-denial, readiness to forego gratification to further a cause and help another. You see, sometimes God wants us to forget about ourselves and reach out and help somebody else. Lift them up. Help them on higher than they ever been. Hallelujah. Self-esteem again. That's a good opinion of yourself. And again, it's self-evident. No further proof or explanation when somebody <laughs> walks in knowing who they are. Because when I walk in who knowing who I am, it's not me, but it's Him. Because if you know my past, you know I ain't capable of this. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you about all my past. It scares me. But you see, church, we... We walk in an hour at a time. And we got to walk a little different, a little stronger, 
with more power and more authority than we've ever walked. Knowing who we are, who God said we are. Instead of everything that they dictate to us and say that we should be, religious spirits who tell us how we ought to be, how we ought to act, they put us down, tell us how to act, how it ought to be. It's time we let God tell us, let God dictate us. Stay in, in the Word. When we begin to walk in that and knowing it, I'm going to tell you, church, it'll be different in your life and those around about you because they'll soon realize you know who you are. You're the master of your own situation with God in control. You're not pushed around and beat down. You're not dictated to by world's affairs. They'll tell you what to do. And in the midst of it, I'll get tired, we'll get weary. Well, guess what the writer of Hebrews said? I think, I think Paul was the writer of Hebrews. But the writer of Hebrews said, There remaineth a rest to the people of God. Church, that ain't the sweet by and by. That comes without saying, that's part of the course. He said there's, there remains a rest to the people of God. That's in the here, now, and now. I need some rest while I walk through my trials and troubles and storming waves and the raging fires and hail coming against me. I need some rest in my soul. God said there's a rest for somebody who knows who you are. Walk in the rest, the knowledge of God, His peace, His joy through it all. No matter what's coming against you, no matter what tries to bring you down, no matter what you're facing, God made a promise when you know who you are. You can walk with the rest of God. There's nothing better than having the peace of God and the joy of God and rest of rest of God. And everybody looking at you and saying, you crazy? How can you? I see what you're going through. I see what's happening to you. I see this, see that. Oh, yeah. Well, that ain't nothing but a thing. You see, I'm a child of the King. <laughs> I'll speak to the storm. Speak with a thought in the minute. And, and Jesus knows who we are. He knows what we can handle. He's looking for a greater opportunity to go how we ever been before. Let us go through it. Let us come, come through those things. And God's trying to elevate us to a position that the world going to step back and take notice. All those religious folks are going to take notice too. Well, what about that church in our spring here? Well, I thought there was just some fanatics, but guess what? God's dead there with them. He's moving with them. Signs and wonders have fallen upon them. Ooh, can you just come down here and take a look? Just take, go, go down and take a gander because you can't deny what God is doing. He says what, what God's trying to get his people to before he comes again. Again, he come out to broken down, being out church, churches wore out and, and <coughs> trampled on. He come out to go to church without spot or recon. He come out to one has made herself ready. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, do you know who you are? No, don't, 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 don't raise your hand again. But do you know who you are? Any of these things that struck a chord in your soul, take it home when you pray about it. Do like I do. Oh, I'm going to take another step forward. I'm going to try one more time. I messed up here, but I'm going to go again. I'm doing a little bit more than I did yesterday. So this, this ain't the end of it. We're still breathing. It ain't over until God calls our number takes our last breath. But as long as we got breath, we got the opportunity to go higher with Him and learn more of Him and learn more about who I am. And it's a learning affair. I'm still learning. I'm, t I'm gonna still be learning when He comes. And all throughout eternity, Brother Greg, I'm gonna be learning more things about God for all eternity. It's a never ending process. But church, we don't have to just settle for less. That's what he's preached about. It our our vision. I can't get away from it. We got to step out, begin to encompass and embrace more than we ever have with a belief. Just watch me now. God's on my side. I'll be putting you in your place. But the devil's under my feet. He can't do nothing. If he gets out, I'm going to kick him way down there behind me. See, God wants us to know who we are. Until we begin to know who we are, we won't, we won't walk any different. We'll stay discouraged. We'll be up now and been out of shape and everything else. And every time we mess up a little bit, we'll just we'll throw in the towel and quit. But God don't want that. God don't kick his children now. He ain't gonna, he gonna throw, he, he just said, get up, dust yourself off. Let me whip you a little bit. Good, he's gonna chastise us. He chastises me over and over. I'm, I'm glad he lets me know I'm a child of the king. I'm, a, I'm his kid. He's, taking, he's whipping me. He's, it don't strike me out. I need more. Whatever it is, I need it. I got one chance to get it right. That's on this side. We have tree fall. We it's going to lie. We got one opportunity, church, to get it right. And just try to do more and get other ones in. Would, would you stand all over this house? These, these offices are still up there. They're always up there. I'm up here.
If we need anything from God at all tonight, it don't matter what it is. We've never been saved. We need to come get our name in the left book of life and begin to walk towards the knowledge of who we are. Because the minute you say, I will, surrender to Him, submit to Him at that moment, God gave you all the authority and power in heaven. The Bible said so. I believe it. You got all the power that you'll ever need. You don't have to wonder about it or worry about it. If you mess up a little bit, that's all right. Just dust yourself off and keep on. God's got the ample opportunity, ammunition for that too, to take care of you. But when we falter and fail so many times, we just give up and fit. We just settle for this. We just stay in a position at ease in Zion. See, God wants a church that's alive and well, pressing toward the mark on the front line. He's looking for us to challenge the devil. Quit giving him stuff, going to hit any of his territory, take back what we lost was stolen and we gave away. He's looking for somebody who'd hide the bloodstained banner of Jesus. So if he's in it tonight, it needs God on your side. You need to be saved. Would you come? If you're backslidden, would you come? You need to be on fire for God. He said, I'd rather you be on fire because if you look warm, I'm going to puke you out of my mouth. That's nasty. I'm going to puke you out of my mouth. God said, I'm just look warm. He said, I wish you'd be hot or cold. If you're cold, he'll deal with you. If you're hot, that's what he wants. But lukewarm and nothing bothers you. We need anything from God at all tonight. These options are open. He's here to meet you every day. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a way maker. I stand in agreement with whatever God wants to do for you. He can do it. He will. If we have the audacity just to believe Him. See, I believe His Word. His Word has never lied. It's, pr it's proved over and over again that it's the truth. Hallelujah. As I pray, would you call Jesus tonight? We thank you, God, you made us to be somebody. Oh, when there was nothing, you lifted us up. Gave us a new life. Gave us hope of heaven. We thank you for that tonight, God. You made us to be somebody when we was nobody. When we were outcast. When we were downtrodden. When we were scum of the earth, God, you lifted us up and made us somebody. We forgot everything about us, Jesus. I thank you for that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, tonight, help us to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of you, God in Christ Jesus, to be somebody, to be that you called us to be, to fill the position you called us to, Lord, and I can do it because you said so. We don't have to do it because you're doing it through us. It's all about you. Oh, hallelujah, hide us behind the cross, overshadow us with the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, tonight, we need you. Oh, you're the healer. I am the God you said that healeth thee, that has healed you, that delivers and sets free tonight, God. Those in this house that need deliverance, would you speak to the heart? Oh, God, with an attitude of yielding to you to deliver them. God, we stand a great for your healing power to flow like a mighty river in this place. The fire of your God to fall for the freshness of the Holy Ghost of God. Breathe on us tonight, oh, God, Holy Ghost of God. Breathe on us, people, with fresh fire, with enthusiasm, with the knowledge of that we are somebody. We're the king's kids, oh, God. Help us to walk like it. Act like it and talk like it. Jesus. Lord, we need you now more than ever. In the hours and the days of faceless, we got to have you. We're desperate, we're hungry for a move of the Spirit of God. Have your way. Anybody tonight? Need you to thank from God. But I challenge every one of you. In your prayer time, begin to seek God as never before. Walk in the knowledge of what God says you are. You put this is the lies of the devil. The devil's a lie. He's talking, he's lying. Just believe God. He got better for you. He got more good for you than you want for yourself.